and welcome to another edition of Toys from the Attic. For today's episode, I thought I'd be taking a look at 1990's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Leatherhead. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this guy. After a canister of mutagen was lost in a transporter accident, it ended up in the Florida swamps where it came in contact with a local gator, resulting in the mutation of Leatherhead. Now a large humanoid alligator with a Cajun accent, Leatherhead is a skilled survivalist and tracker. Although not very bright, his immense strength and hunting skills still make him a force to be reckoned with. Alright, so here we have the original Leatherhead action figure. Now as far as his detailing goes, he has a lot of little bumps and ridges to help sell that scaly skin look. And considering that these guys are often made out of clay and then wax, that's actually pretty impressive, meaning that someone actually had to take it all that time to carve in all those little details. Sadly, however, the details on his clothes are a little bit lackluster. I mean, he has just this plain, simple, frumpy hat. You can see that there's a feather and rope up there and a nice little fish hook that's carved in there. But it's actually kind of just plain, if you think about it. The same goes with his vest. I mean, it's supposed to be some sort of animal skin that he's, I guess he carved up some animal and just threw it on as a jacket. The details get a little bit lost over here on his arms, but there's just enough right there on his uh, back to tell that it's fur. His pants, yeah, they're also pretty simple too. I mean, there's just enough little cuts and patches on them to make it seem like he grabbed someone's old work pants and boots and just threw them on. His belt though, actually that has... It's a little bit redeeming right there just because you can see some of the details. I hope they come through on the camera. There's a nice little pouch right there, some little fish hooks, a crate fish, a turtle. I have no idea what the heck that is. It looks like some sort of plant or root or I want to say some sort of like maybe bananas or something. I don't know. Bullets and a nice little pouch right here. But as far as his detailing goes, yeah, there's a lot more time spent on his skin. Now you probably noticed this little loop on his belt. That actually held a bear trap accessory that would open and close on whoever stepped on it. Sadly, however, it's one of those accessories that have been lost over the years. You gotta keep in mind that when I first got this guy, I was about six or seven, and I used to take him along with my other Ninja Turtles over to my cousin's house or even to school all the time. And back then, I wasn't so concerned about keeping all the accessories together, so naturally, a lot of things were lost. The only weapon that I was able to hold on to for him was actually his shotgun. And thinking about it, I really like this weapon. I mean, how many Ninja Turtles characters can you say come with just a plain shotgun? A lot of other figures, yeah, it'd be some sort of mutated shotgun it would have garbage on it or some sort of animals helping to hold it together, but the fact that it's just plain is pretty darn neat. I also like that they added the detail of having his finger out right here, making it look like he's ready to pull the trigger at a moment's notice. Later figures, they would probably just have him holding it in just a fist without adding that extra detail or even thinking about having a trigger finger right there. So yeah, his weapons are actually pretty cool. As far as his articulation, his head can move side to side, his arms are able to move up and down, however he doesn't have any elbow or wrist articulation, which is actually common for most of the villains in this line. His tail can move side to side and rotate around, and his legs are actually on ball joints, but because they're so short, he can't really do too much with them, so he's not going to be able to kick or do anything else like that. Another neat feature, which I think is pretty innovative, but ultimately, well, falls short, is the fact that his jaw can actually open. I don't know if they did that to make it look like he's talking, or to make it so you could pretend that he's actually opening up to bite down on characters. If that's the case, then why didn't they have it to where his jaw can open up a lot further? When you think about an alligator character, you want their jaw to open up really big, so it looks like they could clamp down or bite down on just about anything. With it opening up this much, it's... Not that intimidating, I mean, yeah. If you try to force his head open to get to open up more, his head just kind of pops off. I think that's kind of cool that I guess you could pretend that you just blew his head off if you wanted to kill him, but for this type of gimmick, I mean, if it's not going to go really far out, you might as well not do it at all and just sculpt his head solidly close. It's, it's just kind of a bit of a disappointment. Now my biggest problem with this guy is his overall height next to the Ninja Turtles. Seeing him next to Raphael right here, he looks like a real shrimp. I always thought this was kind of a shock considering that in the cartoons and comics, he towers over the turtles, a real menacing force to be reckoned with. Almost on equal height level with Bebop or Rock City, if not more so. And to have him this small, it's just really underwhelming. 
I remember when I was a kid, I was really excited to pick this guy up after seeing him in the cartoons, open him up and play with him. But after standing him next to the Ninja Turtles, I was really let down and disappointed. It's just sad to see a character fall short like this. And because of that, I probably didn't play with this guy as much as I would have liked to or even should have. Anyways, this has been a look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Leatherhead action figure. Once again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, please feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment below in the comment section. Any advice for the show will be greatly appreciated. Who knows, something you suggest may appear on the show in the future.